What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Zahid. Welcome to part two of the interior modernization series for my Honda S2000. The whole goal of the series is to modernize the interior without sacrificing the charm that makes this car so special to begin with. Let's go. Was that first try? Oh. Okie dokie. In part one, we upgraded my stereo and speakers while still retaining my dash controls. In part two, today's video, we're gonna gut the entire interior and we're gonna turn things down a notch, if you know what I'm saying. We're gonna sound deaden the entire interior of the car. But before we do that, I wanna get a baseline. So we're gonna take the car out for a cruise and we're gonna measure the current uh, decibel levels of just regular driving. In an effort to provide you guys with honest feedback in these videos, I have to clarify something. I made the mistake of picking a very specific point while driving to set my baseline decibel reading. In hindsight, I should have taken a range of readings at different speeds and RPM levels to get a better understanding of how effective the sound deadening is. The idea is, the sound deadening may not be as effective in low or high RPM, but could totally make a difference cruising at highway speed. Regardless of what I should have done, my baseline test of holding 30 miles per hour in second gear came out to about 78.1 decibels. I'm hoping to see a lower baseline after the install, but I may have to rely on my ear dyno to determine if there are any changes. As we begin prepping the car for sound deadening, let's talk about why you might want to do this to your car. Cars made by what used to be considered economy brands like Honda, Toyota, and Nissan generally did not have the best interiors. They usually felt a little cheaper compared to their luxurious cousins like Acura, Lexus, and Infiniti. One of the reasons economy brands had what felt like cheaper interiors was due to the lack of sound deadening. Now, I might be saying this just because I'm older now, but I think all street cars can benefit from additional sound deadening, especially if they didn't come with it from the factory for cost saving reasons. Sound deadening can come in many forms, but in today's install, we're mainly using sound deadening mats and insulation. Once the cabin is stripped and the metal floor is exposed, we'll have to prep the surface by cleaning out any loose debris and using something like an alcohol prep spray to give the mats the best chance at adhesion. I went with Kill Matte Sound Deadening and you can find links to everything used in today's video in the description below. I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty satisfying laying down the mats. They adhere well and can easily be molded to fit in all the nooks and crannies in the floor pan. The goal here was to get to at least 90% coverage in the cabin, and I think we may have exceeded that. All right, so it is the next day, and we're probably about 90% of the way covered in the interior cabin. I'll give you guys a little tour. I don't know how good you can see. You know, we're, we're in a good spot for the most part. I have a theory that a lot of the sound inside of the cabin actually comes from the transmission tunnel. And so I'm gonna beef up this area a little bit more. But other than that, we're pretty much good to go. With the carpets nice and clean, it was time to reassemble the interior. Shout out to Jose and Mark for doing most of the disassembly, but that did pose a bit of a challenge for me since I didn't know how to put things back together. I've said this before and I'll say it again. My number one tip when doing installs is to have your more knowledgeable friends do it for you. As I put everything back together, I can definitely tell things are fitting a little more snug. An added benefit of the increased insulation is that there are less gaps between the panels, carpets, and other interior pieces, which I'm hoping will lead to less overall rattles and vibration. As I'm modernizing and upgrading the interior of my S2000, I like to imagine what this car would be like if it was produced by Acura here in the United States instead of Honda. What if the Mark IV Supra was designed by Lexus instead of Toyota? I'd hope the drivetrains would be the same, but the interiors would have more sound deadening, better materials, and a stellar sound quality. All things I'm hoping to improve with each modification in this interior modernization series. So if you made it this far in the video, you must be thinking, the car is put back together, you already laid the sound deadening, just show us the after. Show us how big of a difference the sound deadening actually makes in the S2000. Well, we're not done yet. <laughs> How can I say that I attacked the entire interior without addressing the doors and the door cards? Now, full disclosure, this is day three. I did not think this was gonna take this long, but I figured if I'm gonna do this, I gotta do it right. We're gonna clean this up. We're gonna prep it for the sound deadening mats. And we're gonna try to place it in spots where 
the, the door card makes contact with the inside of the door. Make sure to wear gloves when dealing with sound deadening mats because the aluminum layer on the top side is quite sharp. After the door cards are prepped, I moved on to the actual doors by placing sound deadening mats on the inner portion of the door. As an added bonus, I decided to layer in some acoustic insulation as well. I went with 3M Thinsulate paired with 3M Adhesive Spray. I applied a single layer to the entire inside of the door, making sure it would clear the window in the down position. You must be thinking, we have to be done now, right? Nope. To round this project out, we're also going to sound deaden and insulate the trunk. Start by removing your spare tire and all of the interior trim pieces, followed by a quick surface prep. At this point, I'm getting pretty good at laying this stuff down, and if you appreciate seeing my progress over the four days it took to film this install, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to show your support. So I think we're pretty good in terms of coverage with the sound deadening mat. Now what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to stick a bunch of Thinsulate back there just to kind of insulate it as much as I can. And that's it, we put it back together. In addition to the materials used in this video, many people who attempt to add sound deadening to their cars also use a layer of closed cell foam, which I chose not to do. At this point, I'm truly wondering if I did enough to hear a real difference in the car. Regardless of how it turns out, I learned a ton and I hope you guys did too. Anyway, Enough of the install, let's get to some results. Okay, we are back in the S2000, fully assembled, and now there's only one thing left to do, and that's to compare it to our baseline, and also just give you guys my overall review on this installation and the results. In the beginning of the video, I already addressed how my baseline test was really flawed to begin with, but hey, it doesn't hurt to compare it to the after. I have been driving it around for the last hour or so, and Based on my ear dyno, things are sounding pretty good. Okay, we are on the road and going 30 miles an hour. Wow. I got to I got to review the footage, but I think that was that was probably averaging below 75. Let's try it again. After multiple tests, I never got above 74.9 decibels and generally stayed around 73.8 decibels. Very far from a perfect test, but definitely in line with how the car felt. I realized my OEM hardtop helps with a lower baseline, but despite that, we saw a clear improvement. Even things like opening and closing the door sounded significantly better. Overall, for about $250 and some elbow grease, I felt like this project was well worth it. The overall sound within the cabin is definitely quieter. It definitely feels a little bit cleaner, almost a little more refined. It feels like all I'm hearing is the engine and the exhaust. Okay, now listen to this. We're at, at a stop sign at idle. Do you hear that? Me neither. It is absolutely silent at idle. It, it feels a little eerie how quiet it is. <laughs> Listen to that. I mean, do you guys even hear any? I, I don't know if the camera can pick up on it. At speed, it's not noticeably more quiet. I mean, in the higher RPM ranges, it's pretty, you know, the car and the exhaust is pretty loud, so it's harder to tell. But I will say that the sound funneling into the cabin feels cleaner. It feels like there's less vibration noise and more pure engine and exhaust sounds. If you made it this far into the video, first of all, thank you. And second of all, I want to give you guys a little treat. Two treats, actually. In the last episode of this series, we're going to be replacing a bunch of interior pieces with brand new OEM pieces. And we're also going to be introducing some very premium aftermarket pieces that's going to make this car feel 
Very, very nice. Almost like a Porsche GT3 inspired interior. So I'm really excited to share those products with you guys. And as an added bonus for sticking around to the end of this video, because according to the analytics, like 95% of people are not watching at this point. As an added bonus, I'm gonna do a little giveaway. Anyone who comments on this video and includes the word Thinsulate in their comment, I will include you in the running to win enough Thinsulate to line your doors and your trunk just like I did. I, I ended up with a lot of extra Thinsulate at the end of this project. And maybe I can help you guys save a little bit money on your own sound deadening project by giving away enough Thinsulate to line your doors and your trunk. So all you have to do again is comment on this video and include the word Thinsulate in your comment. That's my way of giving back to anyone who stuck around till the end of the video. So I'll see you guys in the next video, the finale of the interior modernization series. Until next time, peace out. Take care guys.